A well-constructed snack city in your freezer has some diversity. A little something salty, a little something sweet. That way you can cover all of your cravings. You will almost never find me without these chocolate chip pancake bites in my freezer. They are my favorite sweet addition to Snack City. Sometimes I'll use them as a breakfast, other times as a late night snack. Either way, they've got a solid dose of protein and they taste awesome. Here's how I make them. I'm making 96 pancake bites in this video, so all of my measurements will reflect that. It should also be noted that when I write these recipes, I use weighted measures and not volumetric measurements. If you want these to turn out exactly how I have them, I recommend using a digital scale. Into a large bowl, add 400 grams of oat flour or about four cups, 100 grams of cornstarch or tapioca flour or about one cup, 120 grams of vanilla casein protein powder or about four scoops, and then 16 grams of baking powder or four teaspoons. Mix that together until it is thoroughly combined. This recipe calls for vanilla casein protein powder. Notice it doesn't say whey protein or vegan protein. Please do not try and use a different kind of protein powder in this recipe. Baking with protein powders can be very finicky. If you try to make this with whey protein, you're gonna end up with very dense hockey puck-like pancake bites. You don't want that. Casein protein has a different protein and molecular structure than these other proteins do that lends itself more favorably to baking. If you're gonna make these, just go buy the vanilla casein. Any micellar casein should work, but I will link the one I use in the description below. Next, we need to add our liquid ingredients. Start with 520 grams or about two cups and two tablespoons of liquid egg whites. Then pour in 600 grams or two and a half cups of water. The liquid egg whites you buy in the carton will be much easier to use here. You can crack open a bunch of eggs and pull out the yolks or probably even just get by with using the full egg. But I get my liquid egg whites from Costco. They're very affordable there. If you have access to a Costco, I recommend buying your liquid egg whites from there. Stir that mixture together until you have a smooth batter and then add in about half of your chocolate chips, which is 60 grams or a fourth of a cup. Alternatively, you can swap out the chocolate chips here for blueberries, which would give you a lower calorie, lower fat option. If you do decide to take this route, I would recommend trying to find small blueberries. We're using miniature chocolate chips here because the smaller the filling, the more that can fit into that pancake bite. If you use blueberries and you get big ones, you may only be able to fit one blueberry into each pancake bite, and that wouldn't really turn out that great. After the batter is finished, we need to fill our mini muffin tins with the batter. My preferred method to do this is with a piping bag, but a close second would be to use a cookie scoop like I'm doing in this video. Make sure you spray your wells with some cooking spray before you add the filling, and I even take a paper towel and go around the edge of each well just to make sure I have full coverage of oil around the whole thing. The hardest part of this recipe is trying to figure out how much batter goes into each well so that you don't run out before you get to the end. Filling each well between halfway and three quarters of the way full is about the right amount. I always find that at the end, if I don't have enough to fill all the wells, you can just go take from the wells that have a little bit more than the others. Once all the wells are filled, you can take your remaining chocolate chips and sprinkle them over the top, trying to make sure you get at least some chocolate chips on top of each pancake bite. I got these 48 well mini muffin tins from Amazon and I will include a link to them in the description below. You're gonna bake these at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for nine to 10 minutes. If you happen to have two giant mini muffin tins like me and you're making 96 pancake bites and you wanna bake them at the same time, Know that you can, but the pancake bites that go on the top rack tend to take a little bit longer to cook than the ones on the bottom rack. In my experience, it's best just to bake them separately, and since they only take 10 minutes to bake, it's not that big of a deal, but if you do throw them in there together, leave the ones on the top rack in for a little bit longer, otherwise they'll be prone to sticking. I find that when you bake them one at a time and you oil your muffin tin well, they'll pop right out of the tin. You can see with this one here, I pulled it out with my fingers. It didn't take any coaxing at all. Occasionally when I don't spray my muffin tin well or I try to bake both of the tins at the same time, you do get a little bit of stickage, but nothing that a little butter knife can't fix. Just take a butter knife around the edge, give it a little twist and it should pop right out. I like to pull the pancake bites out of the muffin tin and allow them to cool. Once they have cooled down to room temperature and the chocolate chips have solidified, I move them over into a Ziploc bag, remove as much air as possible and they can live inside of Snack City from here. As long as you have a cold freezer and maintain an airtight seal on that bag, these pancake bites will last months in the freezer. To reheat them, I go straight from the freezer to a plate into the microwave until they are hot and soft. This usually takes between two and two and a half minutes. Your microwave may differ in power than mine, just test them every 30 seconds. Anytime you open this bag to get a quick snack, try and close it and get as much air as possible out before you put it back in the freezer. This will help to prevent freezer burn and make them last a bit longer. Another tip, make sure your freezer is cold enough. I recently moved into a new apartment, made a bunch of snacks for Snack City, threw them into the freezer, and I noticed something was a bit off. Usually when I put my snacks in the freezer, they are frozen solid within a couple of hours. The next day when I opened the freezer to check on them, I noticed they were still a bit squishy. So I turned the temperature down on my fridge and it was fine after that. 
Each one of these pancake bites has about 34 calories and two grams of protein, not counting any syrup. You'll have to add that on extra. You can find the full written recipe for these pancake bites in the description of this video below, or you can go to my website, mealprepmanual.com and find hundreds of other meal prep recipes as well as snack recipes just like this one. Go check it out. See you next week.